Hello everyone, welcome to our fourth practical in the upper limb module. This is Dr. Ghazali, teaching assistant at the Department of Anatomy, Faculty of Medicine, University of Khartoum. In today's practical session, we will study the forearm, including superficial and deep flexor compartment, extensor compartments, cubital fossa, and anatomical snuff box. Let's go to our first station. As we said, the forearm is the part of the upper limb that lies between the elbow joint and the wrist joint. So this is the forearm. The forearm is divided into anterior, which is bulkier, mainly for flexor. It's called the flexor compartment. And a posterior extensor compartment. Our first station will be about the superficial muscles of the flexors compartment. It contains five muscles. They have a common origin, which is here, from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Okay? They are all innervated by the branches of the median nerve except the most medial one which is the flexor carpi alnaris regarding the component of the superficial uh, flexors if we place our forearm if we place the heel of the opposite hand in the medial epicondyle and extended our fingers the four the the fingers will lie in a direction similar to the muscles the thumb will be above the pronator teres muscle the index will be on flexor carpi radialis the middle will be on flexor digitorum superficialis the ring will be on palmaris longus and the Little finger will be on flexor carpi alnaris. Now, let's see our muscles again. This is the pronator teres muscle. This is flexor. This is flexor carpi radialis muscle. This is flexor digitorum superficialis and this is the tendon of palmaris longus and this is the flexor carpi alnaris muscle we will talk about each one of them individually okay the pronator teres has got two heads of origin this one is the superficial head originate from the common flexor origin which is the medial epicondyle and a deeper head that originate from the coronoid process of the ulna all right uh, the pronator teres is inserted into the middle of the lateral aspect of the shaft of the of the of the radius so it is from the medial epicondyle to the lateral aspect of the middle shaft of the radius as the name implies pronator so the action is pronation of the forearm and it is also a weak flexor flexor of the elbow joint regarding important relationship in the pronator theories the median nerve enters the forearm between the superficial and the deep head. Okay, it also, it also forms the medial boundary 
of this fossa, the cubital fossa. Okay, this is our first muscle, which is the pronator teres. It is, as we said, innervated by a branch from the median nerve. Our second muscle is this one. Okay. This one is called flexor carpi radialis. It originates from the common flexor origin in the medial epicondyle and inserted into the base of the second and the third metatarsal bones. Okay. It is supplied by a branch from the median nerve. Regarding its action, it is a primary flexion of the wrist and it also causes abduction of the wrist. Okay, if we pull the muscle, it will cause flexion and slightly abduction of the wrist joint. Okay, okay. regarding our third muscle, which is this one. This one is called the flexor digitorum superficialis. The flexor digitorum superficialis, again, arises in two heads. The first head arises from the common flexor origin which is the humerus, medial epicondyle of the humerus, and from the ulna, called the humeral ulnar head. The other head arises from the uh, radius. So it has got two heads. One is humeral, humeral ulnar head, and the other one is the radial head. Okay? It uh, continues as a fleshy part, until the midpoint of the forearm, then it forms into tendon. The tendon then gives four slips, one for each finger of the four medial fingers. Okay. Regarding the uh, insertion of the tendons, we will see them in the next practical in the hand. But we should know that it is attached into the base of the proximal phalanx of the medial four fingers. Regarding uh, relationships, the flexor digitorum superficialis anterior to the median nerve. This is the median nerve. So it has got an anterior relation with the median nerve. Uh, regarding the arrangement of the tendons in this area, this area is called the flexor retinaculum. The arrangement of the four tendons is as follow. The tendons of the ring and the middle finger lies anterior to the index and the little finger. So in the area of the flexor retinaculum, this is the arrangement of the four tendons. Okay. Regarding the action of this muscle, flexor digitorum superficialis, it is a flexor of the proximal interphalangeal joint and also flexor of the wrist and flexor of the metacarbophalangeal joint. So it flexes the proximal interphalangeal joint, flexes the metacarbophalangeal joint and weak flexor of the wrist joint. Okay. Our next muscle, which is this one, it is called Palmaris longus. Palmaris longus is an inconstant muscle. It is absent in 
13% of the population it is tendon passes anterior to the flexor retinaculum to be attached to the palmar aponeurosis of the, of the hand the action of palmaris longus again is flexion of the wrist joint and being attached to the palmar aponeurosis it anchors the skin and the fascia of the hand so if there is a force shearing force on the palm of the hand the palmaris longus prevent damage of the skin and the fascia okay so this is palmaris longus muscle our last muscle in the superficial flexor compartment is this one it is called flexor carbi alnaris muscle the flexor carbi alnaris muscle again arises from the common flexor origin here in the medial epicondyle and it is attached distally into the busy form trapezoid and the base of the first metatarsal of the fifth metatarsal of the fifth metacarpal okay to the busy form hamid and fifth metacarpal the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris is immediately related to the ulnar nerve and vessel okay it is medial to the ulnar nerve and vessels this is the relation okay as we said all the flexor the superficial flexor compartment are supplied by branches of the medial nerve with the exception of the flexor carpi ulnaris which is supplied by a branch from the ulnar nerve which immediately below it okay it is action the flexor carpi ulnaris is again flexion of the wrist and ulnar deviation of the of the hand okay flexion and ulnar deviation okay that is all for the superficial muscles of the flexors compartment let's say them again this is pronator teres this is flexor carpi radialis this is flexor digitorum superficialis this is palmaris longus and it is tendon and this is flexor carpi Alnaris. Let's move for the next station. In the second station, we will talk about the deep flexors of the forearm. So this is the forearm. Those are the superficial flexors. Uh, to see the deep flexors, we have to retract them. They are uh, three in numbers. They are bulkier. Okay, we have to retract the superficial. The deflexors are three in numbers. They are bulkier and they are mainly for hand grip. They are all supplied by anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. Except, you know, except for part of the profundus, which we'll see in a minute okay now let's go to our fairest muscle in the deep compartment okay. this one this one is the flexor digitorum profundus this the bulkiest it arises from the olecranon process of the ulna, anterior and medial part of the shaft surfaces of the of the ulna, 
and from the interosseous membrane. So all of this muscle is the flexor digitorum profundus. The flexor digitorum profundus insert, insert by means of four tendons into the distal base of the distal pharynx. Okay, it insert into the base of the distal pharynx. So the action of the uh, flexor digitorum profundus is flexion of the distal interpharyngeal joint. And then it also flexes the metacarpopharyngeal joint and the wrist. Right? We will see in the next practical between the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, the lumbarical muscles arises. The lumbarical muscles arises. Okay? Regarding innervation of the flexor digitorum profundus, the lateral two tendons with their lumbaricals are innervated by the anterior interosseous nerve, while the medial two tendons with their lumbaricals are innervated by the ulnar nerve. Okay? So this is our first muscle in the deep group. Our second muscle, which is this one, this one. It is called the flexor pollicis longus. As you can see here, this is the tendon and the fleshy part arises from one side. So it's a unipinnate muscle. It arises from the radius, okay? And it is inserted into the base of the distal pharynx of the thumb. So pulling it, causes flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb, also causes flexion of the metacarbophalangeal joint and carbometacarbal joint of the thumb. This is the flexor pollicis longus. The flexor pollicis longus is innervated by the anterior interosseous nerve, this one, which is a branch from the median nerve. Okay. Our last muscle in this compartment, which is this one, it is called the pronator quadratus. This one is the pronator quadratus. It arises, it has an attachment from the uh, ulna medially to the radius. It is pronator of the fore arm and approximate the radius to the ulna when carrying a heavy weight. It is uh, supplied by the anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. So those are the three muscles of the deep flexor compartment. Regarding the neurovasculature of the fore arm, we have got the radial and the ulnar arteries. The radial and the ulnar arteries are mainly to supply the hand, while blood supply of the fore arm is mainly from the anterior and posterior interosseous arteries. Anterior and posterior interosseous arteries are branches of the ulnar artery. Regarding the uh, relations of the neurovasculatures, we find, as we said, under the flexor carpi naris, the ulnar nerve and vessels. The relation, the nerve, is at the periphery while the artery is centered. The same thing on the other hand, on the other side, 
we find the radial nerve and vessels with the radial nerve uh, at the periphery. Centrally, we find this nerve, which is the median nerve. We can find it under the flexor digitorum superficialis. Okay. That's all for the deep uh, flexors of the fourier arm. Our third station will be about the extensor compartment of the fourier arm. Uh, as we said, this is the elbow joint. This is the lateral epicondyle. This is the dorsum of the hand for more orientation. Our first muscle, which is this one. This muscle. This is called brachioradialis muscle. The brachioradialis muscle uh, arises from the lateral supracondylar ridge and is inserted in the styloid process of the radius. It ends here. Styloid process of the radius. Okay. Uh, it is uh, one of the extensor compartment because it is uh, innervated by branch from the radial nerve. All the extensor compartments is innervated by the radial nerve branches. But regarding its function, it is a flexor of the elbow joint. Uh, it's mainly the, the flexor of the elbow joint at the mid prone position. It is the powerful flexor at that position. Okay? This is our first muscle called brachioradialis. Immediately next to it, this one is the extensor carbs. Again, the extensor carbi radialis longus arises from the lateral supracondylar ridge above the elbow joint. The extensor carbi radialis longus inserts into the base of the second metatarsal bone. Okay, this is the tendon of the extensor carbi radialis longus inserts into the base of the second metatarsal bone. Okay, uh, immediately below this muscle is this one. It's called extensor carbi radialis brevis. As you can see, the two extensor carbi runs together. The extensor carbi radialis brevis insert in the third metatarsal metacarpal bone in the base of the, of, the of the third metacarpal bone. Okay, the origin of this muscle, extensor carbi radialis brevis, is from the common extensor origin. The common extensor origin is the lateral epicondyle. The fairest muscle to arise from the common extensor origin is the extensor carbi radialis longus. Okay, regarding the uh, brachioradialis and the extensor carbi radialis longus are innervated by branches of the radial above the elbow joint. Brachioradialis and extensor carbi radialis longus innervated by branches of the radius above the elbow. The extensor carbi radialis brevis get its innervation from the posterior interosseous nerve at the cubital fossa. Okay. The two extensor carbi radialis muscle, muscles extend the wrist joint and abduct. Extend and abduct or lateral deviate the wrist joint. Okay. To continue on the superficial group of muscles, the next muscle is this one. And it is called the extensor digitorum. The extensor digitorum originates from the common extensor origin at the lateral epicondyle. It is tendon, then bifurcate into four lips, one for each digit of the, of the medial digits. Okay. The insertion in the digit is called the extensor expansion. We will see it in the next practical. But for now, this is 
the muscle extensor digitorum and those are the tendon of the extensor digitorum okay following in the superficial group of the extensor muscles this one it is adherent to the previous muscle it's called extensor digiti minimi this one is the extensor digiti minimi and this is the tendon of the extensor digiti minimi this is the tendon of the extensor digiti minimi it uh, insert in the extensor expansion of the fifth digit and originate from the common extensor origin our last muscle our uh, next muscle in the superficial group this one is called extensor carpi ulnaris the extensor carpi ulnaris originate from the common extensor origin and it insert in the base of the fifth metacarpal bone okay here right all those muscles as we said uh, get their innervation from the posterior interosseous nerve which is a branch from the radial the muscles that originate from the common extensor origin again they are extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi extensor carpi ulnaris right the extensor carpi ulnaris has got the function of extension of the wrist and ulnar deviation of the wrist joint okay. our last muscle in the superficial group is this one this one called anconians muscle the anconians muscle originate from the posterior aspect of the lateral epicondyle and insert in the olecranon process and the shaft of the ulna this is anconius the anconius get their innervation by a branch from the radial nerve from the radial groove okay. so those are the superficial muscles of the extensor compartment brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi extensor carpi ulnaris and anconius those are the superficial group of muscles the deep group of muscles of the extensor compartment our first one is this one this muscle is the supinator muscle the supinator muscle originate from the medial epicondyle and takes an origin from the supinator crest of the ulna to be inserted in the lateral aspect of the of the shaft of the radius between the two oblique lines the supinator muscle supinate the forearm and weak flexor of the elbow joint so this one is the supinator muscle it is innervation is from the uh, posterior interosseous muscle it has got two heads between them emerges the posterior interosseous uh, branch of the radial nerve okay it has got a relation with the radial nerve okay. okay our next muscle in the deep so those are the superficial if we retracted them we will see the deep group of muscle our first one is this one that it is tendon passes to the base of the first meta, meta, metacarpal bone this one this one is called abductor pollicis longus it's called abductor pollicis longus the abductor pollicis longus takes an origin from the radius the ulna and the intervening interosseous membrane so it takes an origin from both bones and to be inserted into the base of the first metacarpal bone it extend the 
كاربو ميتاكاربال جوينت The muscle immediately next to it, this one is called extensor pollicis brevis. It is extensor in the extensor compartment and for the thumb, so it is pollicis. And because it terminates in the base of the proximal phalanx, it is called extensor pollicis brevis. So the extensor pollicis brevis takes an origin from the radius and the interosseous membrane and terminate in the base of the proximal phalanx. Okay. Our next muscle in the group is this one. This muscle. As you can see, its tendon is this one. This is the tendon, okay? It is called extensor pollicis longus. The extensor pollicis longus takes an origin from the ulna and terminate in the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb. Okay? So, its action is to extend distal. The distal phalanx and to extend the metacarbophalangeal joint and the carbometacarbal joint. Okay. Our, our last muscle in the extensor compartment is this one, which is it is tendon basis to the index. It is called extensor indices. The extensor indices takes an origin again from the ulna and passes to the extensor expansion of the index. Okay. Uh, by this, uh, we finished the deep muscles of the extensor compartment. Let's say them again. This is supinator. This is abductor bolus longus. This is extensor pollicis brevis this is extensor pollicis longus and this is extensor indices okay so in conclusion the extensor compartment of the forearm has got 12 muscles it is innervation comes from the uh, radial nerve and its branches and its main function is extension. That's all for this station. Welcome to the fourth and the last station in our practical. In this station, we will talk about specific spaces. Our first space is the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is the triangular, triangular space above the elbow joint. It is bounded medially by pronator teres muscle. This is pronator teres muscle. And bounded laterally by the brachioradialis muscles. And the base is the line that joins the two epicondyles together. So this is our cubital fossa. Our floor of the cubital fossa is the supinator muscle. This is the supinator muscle. Okay. Our roof of the cubital fossa is the D fascia of the forearm that is reinforced medially by the aponeurosis of the radial tendon. This is the aponeurosis. Okay. Above to these structures, above to the structures of the roof, we find the median cubital vein. Okay. Regarding the, the median cubital vein and the uh, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Regarding the content contents of the uh, cubital fossa from medial to lateral, 
this is the medial side and this is the lateral from the medial to lateral we first find the median nerve then the brachial artery and it is veins the knee committants and then the tendon of biceps femoris so from medial to lateral the median nerve brachial artery and the knee committants then the tendon of the biceps more lateral to it we can find the posterior interosseous branch of the radial nerve okay so that's all for the cubital fossa next we will move into another space called the anatomical snuff box the anatomical snuff box is the convexity between the extensor tendons of the of the thumb okay this convexity bounded laterally by the two tendons those two tendons the tendon of abductor pollicis longus and the tendon of extensor pollicis brevis this is the lateral boundary the medial boundary is this this tendon which is the tendon of extensor pollicis longus so the boundaries laterally abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis and medially the tendon of extensor pollicis longus regarding the base it is formed by the bones the styloid process of the radius the scaphoid bone triquetral bone and the base of the first metacarpal okay regarding structures that we find in the anatomical snuff box are those superficial structures this one okay this one is the superficial branch of the radial nerve this is the radial nerve and this is the tributaries of the cephalic vein okay superficially we find the cephalic vein and the superficial branch of the radial nerve and deep in the anatomical snuff box we find the radial artery crossing by okay this is all about the anatomical snuff box our last structure that we want to demonstrate is this white structure in the posterior aspect of the wrist joint this is called the extensor retinaculum the extensor retinaculum is a condensation of the deep fascia that overlies the forearm it attaches from the radius above the styloid process laterally and obliquely pass into busy form and uh, uh, triquetral it is 2.5 centimeters and it is white structure condensation of the deep fascia okay regarding there is a fibrous septa that separate this uh, a neurosis into six compartments in each compartment specific structure passes by and you have to know them our first compartment will contain these two tendons the tendon of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis this is compartment one compartment two will contain the tendons of extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis this is compartment two compartment three will contain the tendon of extensor pollicis longus this is compartment three compartment four will contain the tendons of the extensor digitorum and extensor uh, DGT meaning extensor indices the two the fourth com the the compartment four 
contain the tendon of extensor digitorum and the extensor indices. The fifth compartment contain the tendon of extensor digiti minimi. This one, extensor digiti minimi. The six, the six and the last compartment will contain the tendon of extensor carbi alnaris. That's all for the extensor retinaculum. Thank you.